happy to. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I am looking at, um, pardon me, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, I'm looking at Romans chapter 8, verses um, 38 and 39 primarily. I'm not saying we won't read something else a little bit, but uh, primarily looking at verses 38 and 39 where Paul is telling us how we will not be separated from the love of God. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, or de nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is... um. It's a wonderful statement um, to know that we will not be separated from God's love, to know that God loves us and cares about us so much that we cannot be separated from God's love. God loves everyone, even now, always. It doesn't matter, be you sinner or saint. Um, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And we cannot be separated. Nothing will separate us from God's love. He loves and cares about all of us. That means each and every one of us, you can take this in a very personal way, which was when I was reading it, um, and, uh, and I thought of doing this, that's what I was thinking of, was taking this in a very personal way. God loves me so much. That means God loves you so much. He loves you, and you, you cannot be separated from God's love. Even, no matter what you do, even if you're going down the wrong path, and even if you, you know, end up going to hell, God still loves you. You know, we love our children, and we raise them and try to teach them the right things and get them to follow the right path. <clears throat> Just because they don't do that doesn't mean we don't love them. We may... You know, we may not have any other choice but to let them do their own thing because they are their own person. But um, that doesn't mean we don't love them. Even when they're doing wrong, we still love them and care about them and we want better for them. So, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> so even more so, as Christians, through, through Jesus, we are not separated from the love of God. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. This is not a, uh, what, this is not a, uh, you know, this does not give you the right to go and sin and do whatever you want to do. You can always draw away from God. You can always pull away from God. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. Just because you pull away and you choose to do wrong things, that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. He loves you. He's still waiting for you like in the prodigal son to come home. So, he still loves you. He always, he always loves us. He always cares about us. And we cannot be separated from his love, even when we're in sin and in wrongdoing. And I want to read this from the Amplified, which is not going to read drastically different, but you may get a little more out of it. For I am convinced, and continue to be convinced, beyond any doubt, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we cannot be separated from the love of God. And that should be of some comfort. Um, if we look at the heading here in my Bible above some of these verses, it's God's everlasting love. And there's a whole there's there's a whole lesson right here that would be a long lesson itself. Um, what then shall we say? Let's start in verse thirty one. 
What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if God is for us, who can be against us? I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty, and more than that, who was raised from the dead, and who is at the right hand of God, interceding with the Father for us. So Jesus is always there interceding for us, so that God always sees us with the same righteousness as Jesus. That's how we're able to go before God and, and interact with God. Because we're not perfect, but Jesus is. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? And that's a rhetorical question, because no. None, none of those things will separate us from the love of God, or the love of Christ. Just as it is written and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. And we do. Our victory is that we have overcome the world. We've overcome everything by following Jesus, by believing in Jesus, by being put in right standing with God through Jesus. And that ultimate victory is to go to heaven and to be with God eternally. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced. Wait, did I get that? Yeah, yeah, yes. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it's important to realize that you are never separated from the love of God. Even when we have bad days, when we have hard days, when we're having an awful time, just remember that you still have that victory in Jesus. You do. You have that victory. You know, you're going to heaven. Remember that you have God's love. God loves you and cares about you even when things are going wrong and things are going bad. And maybe you're feeling down and out and grumpy and sad. And <laughs> I have those same problems. I think we all have those problems. But um, where we, you know, we have days, we have rough days. But remember that you always have God's love. God's love is forever, and He always loves you. And if you're, if you've messed up and strayed, don't worry. God still loves you. Just, just turn around and come home. You know, just come back to Him and, and pray to Him and let Him know that you, you want to come home and that you're, you know, you're sorry and, 
And, you know, that's that's what I have to do on almost a daily basis. I have to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, pick up every day the same way, you know. Um, always remember that God loves you and that uh, Jesus loves you. And it's just, it's always there. That love is always there and available to you, no matter what you're going through. Okay? All right. I want to thank you for listening. Remember that nothing can separate you from God's love. And remember that God does love you.